It's a good time to talk some Nebraska football. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please like, comment, and share, and subscribe. As you dig into the videos here, you'll find that we bring the best discussion, debate, and analysis. And we're talking Huskers with uh, Parker Gabriel from Husker Extra. Parker, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for uh, having me back, Mark. Absolutely. Thank you. You're doing the work for us here. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by. And, of course, the spring game is coming up Saturday, April 13th. So before we get started on who's breaking out, what the storylines are, do we have a concept of what the spring game is going to look like in regards to we have our various forms of tackling, no tackling, offense versus defense and such? Yeah, it's uh, Scott Frost made it pretty clear this week. They're going to he said we're going to play football. So it's going to be a full scrimmage, uh, live tackling. I um, think we'll you know probably running clock in the second half, that sort of thing. But it's going to basically be a, a game. It's at 1 p.m. On Saturday, it's, uh, they have a two-hour window on on uh, Big Ten Network, one to three uh, Central Time, and so it's going to be a, it's going to be a real game. You know, I think that there's a bunch of guys, and we can get into this, but there's a bunch of guys who I think fans would have liked to have seen play that aren't going to um, some skill guys. Jay Spielman, you know, the top receiver on the team. Uh, Wandell Robinson, one of their prize recruits, Maurice Washington. Those guys are both minor injury type situations. Maurice Washington's had this court hearing, court proceedings going on in California for some time. Been limited all spring. He's not going to play. So there's some there's some sizable names um, that aren't playing in the spring game. But I think you'll see, you know, the starters sort of play about a half. Um, some maybe a little less. Some maybe a little more. Uh, and then then backups and walk-ons uh, sort of take it the rest of the way home. On the line with Parker Gabriel from Husker Extra talking Nebraska football here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So what have uh, the storylines been in regards to emphasis on uh, improvement on uh, both sides of the ball? Yeah, it's been, I think, you know, a lot of the storyline here this spring has been about the defense, and, and you know, I mean, they finished um, near the, well, around a hundredth in, in, in total defense and scoring defense in the country last year. And I don't think anyone expects them to be a top 10 group, you know, in, in the fall, but a jump just into the fifties, you know, if they got in the top 50 or 60 in the country um, in defensive efficiency, and I think they were about 60th in, in takeaways last year, you know, if they get that, you know, a, a, a 20 or 30 spot improvement in both of those categories, given what, you know, this offense should be able to do with Adrian Martinez at the helm would would sort of line up for a, a big jump, obviously, from four and eight last year. So um, I think the way the defense has played, there's been pretty positive reviews overall of improvement along the defensive line. And that's that's great, but it's also necessary. I mean, they just didn't, you know, they had some guy. they have a lot of returning production on the defensive line, but it, it needs to, or a lot of returning minutes on the defensive line, but the production needs to be a lot greater this coming year than it was last year. It's a graduate tra uh, transfer from Oklahoma State. Darian Daniels is the older brother of Damian Daniels, who's also on on the defensive line. That's really like if they get if he's a, a real true impact player and they get a step up in production from the six or seven other guys that they have in that group that have played uh, in the past. You know, they could be an average or, or maybe even above average defensive line in the Big Ten, and they have to be um, in order for Nebraska to make the kind of strides it wants to make in 2019. And again, if I remember, based on our conversations and what I had seen online uh, following the 2018 season, this was a defensive uh, pass rush that was bottom two or three in the uh, Big Ten with only about 14 sacks. Now, of course, that's a statistic that can be skewed, but it, it gives a pretty strong indication to production or lack thereof. Yeah, it does. And, and for Nebraska, you know, the three, four, it's um, it's defensive line and outside linebackers in tandem, you know, and it's really that front, that front five. And the thing that they haven't been able to do um, since I've been covering, you know, the last two seasons for sure. And even going back a little further than that, I think is they just haven't been able to get pressure with four, you know, or five. It's, it's always been too often they've had to bring an extra, you know, pass rusher. Um, to get any heat on the quarterback and that you're leaving yourself exposed, obviously, if if you know that you have to bring six to get to the quarterback, you just you're you're you know, the offenses are too good this day and age to to be able to live with that regularly. And so um, the goal for Nebraska, they've got a new defensive line coach this year, Tony Tuioti. 
Um, just got here before spring ball started. Uh, Mike Dawson left for a job with the New York Giants. So Tony Tuyoti likes where they're at. You're right on the sacks number. It can be a little bit subjective. He talks about, you know, we got to affect the quarterback, the quarterback. They're going to have to do that a lot more often um, this fall than last fall. Does this team and the coaching staff and Scott Frost, I'm sure they do, realize that um, they're considered a bit of a dark horse in a positive light that they could take a huge jump or a significant jump in terms of wins total and uh, contention in the Western Division? Yeah, I think they I think they sense that opportunity. I mean, I think last year, you know, um, they got demolished at Michigan late in September. And then after that, you know, they, they lost to Purdue by two touchdowns and Wisconsin by two touchdowns and Northwestern in overtime. But really, I mean, those three games, I think you saw the fine line, maybe not in the final margin, except for the Northwestern game where they were up by 10 with two minutes left. Um, Nebraska was. I think you saw that that they weren't a long ways off from competing with those teams. And that's the meat of the Western division. You know, they, they really, they, then they beat up Minnesota. I think, I think a lot of Nebraska players and, and fans probably watched them, you know, beat Minnesota by 25 points and, and then realized that Minnesota not only qualified for, but won a bowl game and thought, you know, that's, that's sort of, that that middle group of the Big Ten West, I mean, you know, then they lose to Northwestern or uh, at Iowa on a last second field goal. I mean, the West is going to be really wide open, and that doesn't mean that Nebraska is a favorite to win it or anything like that. But I think that, you know, really, if you're any team in the West, you feel like it can be there for the taking. And I, I don't think any Nebraska, Nebraska is any different in that conversation. So, Parker, to make that kind of jump, obviously, some players will need to step up. Uh, who are the guys that you're looking for uh, during the spring game? To, to see if uh, they've made that kind of a leap? Well, well I mean, it, funny as it is, I mean, I think Adrian Martinez falls in that category, um, even though he he wowed a lot of people in his freshman year. He put up big numbers, but that jump for him from being, you know, maybe among the better freshman quarterbacks in the country to being among the better quarterbacks in the country, uh, there's still a lot of room for improvement for him, even though he did things as a freshman that that no freshman quarterback in Nebraska has ever done. and and he was, you know, he was the top freshman in the country in terms of total yards per game uh, last year, total offense per game. And so, you know, he's one of them. I think that they have some young guys, um, Cam Taylor's a corner slash safety um, defensive back that they're going to use a lot. I think they can use him in a sort of a, a multi-purpose role. Um, he's one of their kind of cornerstone guys on defense. And then a guy who is not going to play in the spring game, but I really think Wando Robinson sort of an all-purpose back. He's dealt with a minor hamstring issues sort of over the course of spring ball. Um, it hasn't been 100% except for maybe the first day. And he sort of left, you know, there were a bunch of guys after that first day that said, oh, keep an eye on this guy. He draws comparisons to Rondale Moore because he's from the same area. Um, they work out together. Uh, they're similar stature, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, Rondale Moore had 113 catches as a true freshman at Purdue. So, Let's not just say that that's what's going to happen with Wandale, but I think you can look at it and make the argument that after J.D. Spielman, given the question marks that are in that running back room right now, you know, he might, Wandale Robinson might be their second most important skill player after, after J.D. Spielman. I don't think that's too much of a stretch, and, and he's just out here in January. Well, it's still just uh, Nebraska versus Nebraska. You get the win, you get the loss. Uh, maybe a little bit more interesting, important, and intriguing of a spring game than what we've seen the first few weeks of the uh, spring session across the country because of the late run and the close efforts against uh, some of the best teams in the Western Division, the huge win over Minnesota, et cetera, et cetera, and just the growth and development expected and uh, a reality on this uh, football squad. So I, I think this is one that actually is worth watching. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. You know, there's never a lack of interest. And, and if you're, you know, and if you just turn on the TV and you want to see something that's become more and more of a novelty, uh, in today's day and age, you can turn it on and see 87,000 people at a spring game. You know, um, that's I think that's something Nebraska takes a lot of pride in. Probably some schools around the country that would look at that and say, well, I mean, it's just kind of it's all it's almost bizarre in its own right, you know, but in a good way um, that, that they've sold out they sold out the spring game in 
you know, 20, 48 hours this year, 24 hours last year. Um, so it's going to be a full house. It's, it's live on BTN. Um, there's a bunch of players that aren't playing and there's no quarterback battle. So it doesn't maybe have the same zip that you might have some years, but, uh, but people around here care about it an awful lot. Uh, the crowd table at uh, Ohio Stadium for the Buckeyes this spring game is typically in that range as well. And you're talking about, uh, we just uh, talked some Ohio State spring game uh, preview just a few hours ago. You're talking about a non-competitive situation with no tackling. So if uh, if Nebraska is anything to apologize for, certainly Ohio State has much more because it's really not going to be much to watch. But uh, they'll fill up the horseshoe to watch uh, their beloved. And, and at Nebraska, again, because of the surge late in the season, Scott Frost, the development of the team, I think it's intriguing and I'll certainly be watching. Parker, we appreciate uh, you stopping by as always. Yeah, of course. Anytime, Mark.